Hello, honey pie. Come away in and see who's at home today. Granny Murray's house has two at home to play. Granny Murray's house is home too. Who's here today? Well, we've got Ellie and we've got Sean. I don't just sit there, my wee twinkles. Come on, let's have a boogie. <gasps> Thanks, Ellie, darling. <gasps> it's disco time in Granny Murray's house. Woo! Let's get moving. Woo! <gasps> you can just spin. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I like your moves, Ellie. Oh, cool, Sean. Disco dancing. Well, we've got Ellie and we've got Sean. And someone's missing from home today. Come on, Kai. Oh, not anymore. Who's coming home to Granny Murray? Ah, yes. Bobby and Kai. Hello, dear. Bobby, hello. <laughs> and Kai, my pleasure. <laughs> oh, wow! What's the party night of? Oh, there's no party. It's just a bit of fun. A bit like brightening everything up. Such a stormy night outside. Oh, you're telling me. We got blown away, didn't we, Kai? <laughs> oh, now you hear my angel. We'll do something new. Why don't you all dress clawed up as a disco dancer? Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's really cheered me up. It's such a horrible, windy night. Oh, I know, darling. Sometimes you just need to brighten up the night. Well, it's certainly working. <laughs> Do you know, I remember one dreary, dark winter, Nicholson's were having their January sales. That's the shop that you used to work at? Yes, that's right. Well, the manager thought that River Sea Fingal could do with some sparkle, so we decided to have a sound and light show. Oh, it sounds great. Yes, well, the whole store was lit up with spotlights and my Angus's band played in the rooftop. Oh, wow, it sounds brilliant. <laughs> yes, I had dancers in every window. It was such a treat. Oh, <laughs> oh will you look at Claude? Oh, wow, Claude, you look like the grooviest disco dancer ever. Oh, he does, doesn't he? He looks like a right raver. <laughs> well done, treasures. Yeah, well done. Well, it's time for me to boogie my way down to work. Here, we made this light up in the dark. Oh, Kai, that's brilliant. I'll take that to work with me. All right, well, I've got to go to work, but I'll see you in the morning, OK? I love you. Bye. <laughs> Come on. Bye. Now remember, sometimes you need to brighten up the night. Thanks, Granny Murray. I'll see you later. Bye-bye, my darling. We'll be thinking of you. Yeah, me too. Well, you keep a wee eye on Bobby. Make sure she goes the right way to work. I'm on my way to work today Walking my shoes through the city views I'm stepping along, I'm swinging my arms I'm singing my way Which way? Do I go left now or do I go right? Which way is wrong now? Which way is right? Right! OK, that way. To the bus depot. I'm on my way to work today. Looking this way and that away. Oh, hello, Digger. Hello, Drain. Oh, hello, lamppost. Hello, Drain. Hello, post box. Oh, hello, plane. She's on her way to work today. Looking this way and that away. Hey! Do I go up now or do I go down? Which way's a smile now? Which way's a frown? <gasps> OK, that way, up the steps. You told me the way I go. Thank you. You showed me the way. For that? Right, what's first? Mm -hmm. I need to put on my work clothes. All dressed and ready to go. 
Oh, I don't like this. It's such a dark and stormy night. I can even hear it in here. Ah. I'm going to stick some music on and drown out the sound of the storm. Hi, Bobby. Hello, Bobby. Whoa! Gosh, you made me jump. Sorry. I, I did try to say hello, but you didn't hear me. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was uh, just trying to drown out the sound of the storm. Here, let me help you. Oh, hey. These look interesting. They're leaflets for Dr Juno's Be Seen campaign. That's why I'm here. Because if people don't wear reflective clothing or have lights on their bike at night, it can cause accidents. Dr Juno's made these leaflets to encourage people to be seen. I see. I think. So, um, where do I come in then? Well, Dr Juno's got permission from the inspector mm -hmm. to put a pile of these leaflets on each bus. Oh, well. That shouldn't be a problem. I can do that for you. <sighs> I'll just uh, stick a pile of leaflets in each bus as I clean them. Oh, cheers, Bobby. You're a star. <laughs> Ah, Kai's little dangly key ring. Kai's quite right. This does look quite bright in the dim light. Wish I could see my Kai, though. I love to skip in Riversy Ping, go Riversy Ping, go by the sea. I love to skip in Riversy Ping, go Riversy Ping, go that's for me. Do you want to be the North Wind? Yeah. OK. Right. Ooh, it was a dark and stormy night. But Claude, the disco dancer, he wasn't bothered. He danced and danced the night away while the north wind blew. Whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> oh, well done, Kai. You've chased the storm away. Your mum would be pleased. I've chased the wind away, Mummy. Right, well, this bus is clean. So, I'm going to stick the leaflets. There. Ah, oh, this is great. Be bright in the night. Don't be mean. Make sure you're seen. Well, this will do a lot of good if it encourages people to use flashing lights and reflective clothing. Well, hey, now here's something shiny and that catches the light. Reflective strips. Woohoohoo! Aren't they fab? Oh, this is just the sort of interesting knick-knack that you find lying around a bus depot. It's great. Gosh, look at the time. Eight o'clock. Time I got down to some hard work. Bobby Boogie Woogies as she cleans and mops the buses. Sponging with a squeegee, sweeping rubbish with her brushes. Shining up the headlamps for the night time show. Bright and beaming buses, bye bye soon. Cleaning while you're dreaming, making ready while you're. Dazzle the day away Swing into the city looking pretty and radiant The hubcaps gleam, the paintwork shines A river sea double-decker looks so fine The driver she drives, collecting the fares Leaving then arriving, she will get you there This bus is stopping, dropping, picking up and putting down This bus is shining, it's the talk of the town And Bobby Boogie Woogie is flipping over, flipping under Running round and scrubbing up, she really is a wonder Sticking up the posters as she wobbles on her toes. And Bobby walks the moonwalk as she robs and wipes the windows. Dusting through the starlight, adding sparkle as she goes. Polishing the buses so they'll all be gleaming for the day ahead. <sighs> well, that's all the leaflets done. Oh, gosh, it really is a windy night. Still. At least these reflective strips are easy to find in the dim light. I'm going to put these in the bothy so that they don't blow away again. <sighs> I hope my Kai's all cosy and warm. Maybe there, that's right. 
They need to have wee reflective strips because these vehicles need to be seen at night. This one. That one goes this there. Thing. Oh, do you know your mum wears a jacket a bit like that? That's so that she can be seen in the dark. That's right, because she works at night. Good boy. Like a sort of mobile Christmas tree. Well, it's very important to be clearly visible in the dark for safety. Not just with reflective strips, but with flashing lights too. Yeah, I thought your leaflet made that very clear. Can I see? Yeah, no probs. Come and have a look. There. Have you put any leaflets on here? Yeah. Well, where are they? Right there. Where? I can't... Oh, there they are. Oh dear. What's the matter? Well, this is very disappointing, Bobby. I know you've tried your best, but it's been a complete waste of time. The leaflets aren't bright enough, and it's quite dim in here. I'm just really worried that if they're not displayed properly, no one will pick them up or read them. They just won't notice them. <sighs> oh, dear. I've worked really hard tonight cleaning the buses and displaying the leaflets and now Dr Juno says that it's been a complete waste of time because nobody's going to see them. What did I do wrong? Where did the time go? At six o'clock, I took Kai to spend the night with Granny Murray. The children were having great fun dancing to the music to chase away the storm. At seven o'clock, I was ready to start work. Nurse Hendry asked me to put some leaflets for Dr Juno's Be Seen campaign on the buses. At 8 o'clock, I started to put piles of Dr Juno's leaflets on all the buses. At 10 o'clock, it was so windy that the wind blew a pile of reflective strips all over the floor. Luckily, I could easily find them to pick them all up because they're so bright. At 12 o'clock, Dr Juno arrived on her bike. With all her flashing lights and reflective clothing, she was very easy to see. Dr Juno was very disappointed with the way I displayed all the Be Seen leaflets. She thinks that no one will notice where they are, and so no one will read them. I've worked so hard all night to get the leaflets on the buses, but they still can't be seen. Now remember, sometimes you need to brighten up the night. Remember, sometimes you need to brighten up the night. That's it! Dr Juno says that the best way to brighten things up is with flashing lights and reflective clothing. I know just what to do. It's a race against time. I've got to do it. I've got to do it. I've got to beat the clock before the chime. I've got to sort it. I've got to sort it. I've got to do the job on time. Like a busy bee, I'm going to beat that bong. I'm going to finish this job before I finish this song. Do we think she's going to do it? Do the job that needs to be done? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna beat that clock before the chime. I'm gonna sort it. I'm gonna do the job on time. Like a busy bee, I'm gonna beat that bong. I'm gonna finish this job before I finish this song. There they are. This is fantastic, Bobby. I spotted the leaflet straight away. Well, that's great. I think it's time for a break. Yeah, I'll put the kettle on. Oh, what's this? Well, perhaps we should follow them. Hmm, come on. Ta-da! <laughs> Hello again. I thought you guys needed some refreshment after a hard day's work. Oh, what? Oh, this is wonderful. Mm. I bet you're fast asleep by now, aren't you, Kai? Oh, my angel, can you not get to sleep? No, the wind's too loud. Oh, my darling. Never mind. You listen to me and close your eyes and you'll soon be sleeping. Oh, you never know what the wind may blow. So put on your cosy jammies and to sleep we go. And to sleep we go. I'm thinking of you, Mummy. Bobby, hello, Hi, Bobby. Bobby. You're 
ir vamos ir Kai hi Kai hello mommy oh <laughs> you look like you've had a smashing time oh we should have I'm going to say thanks to Granny Murray. Thank you. Bye-bye, my treasure. <laughs> and thanks from me too, Granny Murray. I remembered what you said. Sometimes you have to brighten up the night. <laughs> it saved the day. It never did. <laughs> Come on. Let's get you home. I'm looking forward to next time. Me too. Right, come on, Kai. Let's chat about our time away. And I suppose you'll want to know all about my time too. Well, there was hugging, squishing, rocking, pushing, dancing, dusting, shearing, choosing, eating, sleeping, fetching, sketching, painting, stretching, gluing, chewing, sticking up and wiping round, dressing up and sitting down. <laughs> <sighs> but what was really special about today? Well, Claude was dressed as a disco dancer because the children and I had been doing some disco dancing with lights and everything to try to cheer up the stormy night. Later on, Kai and I put on our own sound and light show, starring Claude the disco dancer and Kai as the north wind. Kai was tucked up in bed. We did a puzzle together about all the vehicles that you need to be able to see clearly at night. Kai couldn't sleep because of the noise of the wind so I sang him a lullaby to block the storm out. This morning, when Bobby came to pick Kai up, she told me that me telling her that sometimes you need to brighten up the night had saved the day and made Dr. Juno very pleased. What do you think? <laughs> sometimes a bit of sparkle in the daytime helps too. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Me too. Bye bye, honey pie. Me too. Hello, honey pie. Come away in and see who's at home today. Granny Murray's house has two at home to play. Granny Murray's house is home too. Who's here today? Well, we've got Robbie and we've got Hope. But don't just sit there, cherry buns. Let's have some fun. <laughs> what have we got on Granny Murray's shelves today? <gasps> Photographs, postcards, that's fantastic. How can we tell that the photographs are old? Because they're black and white. That's good. Well done. Do you know who this is? This is a picture of my great aunt Mitzi. Well, we've got Hope and we've got Robbie. But someone's missing from Granny Murray's today. Oh, not anymore. Who's coming home to Granny Murray? Ah, uh, it's Rebecca with Mickey John. Hello there! <laughs> Mickey John! Hello! Oh, In we come, Rebecca. That's a good girl. We've been looking at old postcards and photographs. Oh, I came across a picture of my great aunt Mitzi. Here? Why don't you all dress Claude up as Great Aunt Mitzi? <laughs> That's the way. <laughs> kind sir, could you escort me to the drawing room? Delighted to, my lady. Oh! Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, my Great Aunt Mitzi was a wonderful woman. Obviously, she was quite old when I knew her. Not quite the young woman she was in that picture. She must have had a soft spot for you. Oh, she did. You know, she used to knit me a pair of socks for my birthday every single year. Really? Yes. And I used to be able to tell how old I was by counting all the socks that my aunt had knitted for me. Well, that is amazing. Do you know, ever since I was a young boy, my granny has knitted me a pair of socks every year for my birthday. In fact, I'm wearing a pair now. Look there, see? Oh. <laughs> well, they look a bit worn. It must be getting near time for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do you know, when I think of the years gone by, I think of socks. Me too. I'm taking the children to a museum today and we're going to imagine what it was like to have lived a hundred years ago. Now that does sound like fun. <laughs> oh, well, you look at Claude. <laughs> Oh. Very pretty, Claude. Oh, well done, everyone. He looks just like my great-aunt Mitzi. Here you are. Oh, 
I can't take that. It belongs to Granny Murray. No, no, no. You take that photograph, Mickey John, and use it for your lessons. Thanks, Granny Murray. Well, I'd better be going. Bye-bye, beautiful girl. Bye. Hey. See you later. Come on, then. Now, remember, when I think of the years gone by, I think of socks. Thank you, Granny Murray. I'll see you later. We'll be thinking of you, darling. Me too. Now, you keep a wee eye on Mickey John. Make sure he goes the right way to work. Oh, I don't have much time. How can I speed across the river to work? <coughs> That's right. Thanks. I'm in, 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 in a hurry. I need, 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 need to speed to work. I'll take it, take it, take it on a speedboat. I'll be, 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 be there quite quick. Hurry, hurry, hurry down the river. Splashing, splashing, splashing through the waves. Whining, whining, whining drives the speed up. Chugga, chugga, chugga slows us down. Rocking, rocking, rocking to the dock. Now splashing, splashing to our stop. I'm in, 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 in a hurry. I need, 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 need to speed to work. I'm in, 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 in a hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And hurry, hurry, hurry. Put my tie on. All snazzy and ready to go. Hiya. Oh, morning, Bobby. Ha, I see you brought me some old clothes for my lesson today. Thank you. Let's have a look, see. Look at this dress. Oh. It belonged to me, Mum. It's 30 years old. <laughs> What must your mum have looked like in this? <laughs> Never mind that. Look at these. They're from my dad's old wardrobe. Oh, oh flare-tastic. <laughs> they certainly wore their trousers wide in those days. <laughs> <laughs> well, your class will be here soon, so I'd better get off. OK, thanks for the stuff. Bye. <laughs> See ya. Huh. Nine o'clock. I wonder if Rebecca's on her way to the museum yet. I love to skip in river sea thing, river sea thing, by the sea. I love to skip in river sea thing, The old cases. Do you see? Oh, look at the old milk churn as well. They're very, very old, aren't they? Come and see what's in here. Oh, look! An old waiting room. Oh, you look at the hard seats that good people have to sit on. You look at the old fireplace. Oh, this is a lovely new room. Now, let's go and see what else we can find. What are you doing in school, Daddy? Oh, let's have a look at these. These are good, aren't they? That's excellent. A nice blue jumper there. And uh, purple gloves. Lovely. Well, everything's moving along quickly this morning. The children are coming up with some ideas for a new school uniform. They're working hard, and so am I. Oh, I walk with joy when I go to school in the morning. Teach them with my chums and see the children learning. School day, work away. I'm learning, learning, learning when I'm teaching. I'm teaching, learning, teaching, learning, teaching. School day, work away. Teaching to count and teaching to read. Learn about birds and plants and seeds. Playing games and sports outdoors. Blowing my whistle and keeping a score. Secretary smiling as she does her organising. The Johnny fixes, the cookie mixes, and the cleaner keeps her shining. Oh, what with joy when I go to school in the morning. Holding the line in the dinner queue while the cookie cooks and serves a stew. Answering the questions where and why. How does it work and how does it fly? Right? I'm learning, learning, learning when I'm teaching. Children peep and eye me as they sit and try their writing. I 
take a look and mark their books. The good ones get a smiley. Oh, what joy when I go to school in the morning. Right, that's all your work collected. Oh, that's lunchtime. Off you go. Hi, Tina. Check out all this booty. Loads of costumes from the store, and all for you. <laughs> <laughs> this lot will really help out with my lesson this afternoon. Oh, it certainly will. Oh, oh, look at this. Oh, oh, and, and how about this? <laughs> Raymond loves this. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what period of history you're coming from there. Let me think. <laughs> Don't be silly. These are all parts of different outfits. <laughs> but you knew that, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> right, well, I'll be back this afternoon and Raymond will be here in a minute to help you out. <laughs> See you later, then. Cheery. <laughs> I do have a lot to sort out. Maybe the picture Rebecca gave me this morning will inspire me. I love to skip in River Sea Pingle, River Sea Pingle, that's for me. Look! Look at the big of eye, look at the big steam engine! Wave, everyone! Wave! Hello! <laughs> <laughs> I bet your daddy would love that. I'm thinking of your daddy. All ready to go? Ah, Raymond, I think I've got everything sorted out, yes. Come on then, give it your best shot. Oh, right, uh, here goes. I'm going to tell you about all the different clothes that people wore over the last 100 years. For example, 40 years ago, a young man might have worn a pair of winkle pickers. That's another name for shoes that look like this. They're all pointy, see? Brilliant! <laughs> and 30 years ago, a woman might have worn a dress like this. <laughs> but 100 years ago, People wore these. <laughs> now, these are called spats uh, and... Uh, wait a minute. When was this again? About a hundred years ago. Uh, and was that before or after the pointy shoes? Uh, before. Uh, look, I hope you don't mind me saying so, mate, but this is all a bit muddled. I haven't a clue what clothes are from when. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose it is a bit muddled. I've been working hard all day long to make my lesson fun and simple. But why is it all mixed up? Where did the time go? At eight o'clock, I took Rebecca to visit Granny Murray. Granny Murray told me all about her great aunt Mitzi. She used to knit Granny Murray a pair of socks for her birthday every year. I always get a pair of socks for my birthday too. I was wearing a pair of my birthday socks this morning and I showed them to Granny Murray. When I arrived at the school, Bobby stopped by with some clothes that her mum and dad used to wear. They were rather strange. At nine o'clock, the school day started and the children imagined how their school uniform might look in years to come. At 12 o'clock, Tina came to the classroom with lots of old-fashioned clothes for this afternoon's lessons. I was going through all the old clothes when Raymond popped in to see how I was getting on. The answer was, not very well. 100 years is a long time to think about, and I got rather muddled up. Now remember, when I think of the years gone by, I think of socks. Granny Murray was given a pair of socks for her birthday every year, and if she added up all the pairs of socks, she could find out how old she was. That's given me a brilliant idea for showing how the time has gone by. <sighs> but will I be able to do it in time for this afternoon? <sighs> it's a race against time! I gotta do it, I gotta do it, I gotta beat the clock before the chime. I gotta sort it, I gotta sort it, I gotta do the job on time. Like a busy bee, I'm gonna beat that bong I'm gonna finish this job before I finish this song Do we think he's gonna do it? Do the job that needs to be done Will he know how to fix it? Will he finish what he has begun? He's gonna do it for your friends He will get married in the end Because he wants what he should do I'm working so I'm gonna do it He's gonna do it I'm gonna beat the clock before the chime I'm gonna sort it He's gonna start it I'm gonna do the job on time like a busy bee, I'm gonna beat that bong I'm gonna finish this job before I finish this song Now then, I'm going to tell you about the different clothing that people have worn over the last 100 years Now, 100 years is a long time 
So to help you think about that, I strung up 100 socks. Every sock is one year. Now, some of you have got brothers and sisters who are four. So that's, uh, one, two, three, four. That's here, and some of you are seven. Which is here. And I was born 35 years ago. Which is here. But I want to take you back all the way down here before you and I were even born, before your grands and grandfathers were even born, 100 years ago, where a country gentleman may have looked something like this. Good day, sir. Here I am, all ready for a walk in the park. 100 socks ago. I mean, 100 years ago. Total pip. What a jolly man. Right, let's go forward a few years now to uh, here, 70 years ago today. I wonder what sort of clothes people wore then. What here? Anyone for tennis? <laughs> now, if you were playing tennis 70 years ago, you might have worn something like this. Tally ho! <laughs> right, let's go forward again to 40 years ago. Well, what do you think of this gear then? From 40 socks ago. <laughs> I mean years ago. Maybe your granddad would have dressed like this when he wanted to look smart and stand out in a crowd. See you later, mate. Got a cut and run. <laughs> right, let's see one more person from the past. This time, from 30 years ago. <laughs> Hello, darling! <laughs> oh, wow, what a lot of uh, dress. Yeah, do you like it? Yeah, I feel a bit like a clown, you know, of all different colours. <laughs> do you like darlings? <laughs> wow, what a lot of interesting clothes we've worn over the last 100 years. Come on, then. <laughs> I hope Rebecca's having as much fun as I am. Oh, Rebecca, you look lovely in that bonnet. Just think, a hundred years ago, all the girls your age would have worn one of those. Oh, I wonder what Dad would make of it. <laughs> Hi, Granny Murray. Ah, come oh. a wee through. Look who's here, Rebecca. Hello, beautiful girl. Hello, Daddy. Hey, have you had a lovely time? You bet we have. Say thank you to Granny Murray. Oh, a big girl. Oh, clever girl. And thanks from me too, Granny Murray. You're saying when I think of the years gone by, I think of socks. Save the day. Well, I never did. <laughs> come on, let's get you home. Too. Come on, Rebecca, let's chat about our time away. And I suppose you want me to tell you all about my time too. Well, there was waving, greeting, hello, meeting, bye bye, closing, waking, dozing, eating, sleeping, singing, swinging, walking, sliding, hunting, hiding, jumping up and turning round, dressing up and sitting down. <sighs> but what was really special about today? Well, Claude was dressed as my Aunt Mitzi because we were looking at what people wore a hundred years ago. We could see what kind of clothes she wore by looking at an old photograph. I told Mickey John all about my favourite auntie. She used to knit me a pair of socks every year for my birthday. Mickey John told me his granny used to do the same for him. But there was a hole in his socks because they were rather old. I took the children to a museum where we tried to imagine what life was like 100 years ago. And Rebecca put on a bonnet. Mickey John explained to his class about olden times by looking at lots of socks. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Me too. Bye bye, honey pie. Me too! Hello, honey pie. Come away in and see who's at home today. Granny Murray's house has two at home to play. Granny Murray's house is home too. Who's here today? Well, we've got Sean and we've got Stephen. But don't just sit there, cherry buns. Come on. What's in Granny Murray's shelves today? Oh, it's an ice hockey game. Now, this is a magic board. Wait till you see. There's magnets underneath. 
Look, so when you move the magnets, the man moves. That's fantastic. Oh, I love ice skating. Ooh, nearly a crash. Well, we've got Sean and we've got Stephen, but someone's missing from home today. Oh, not anymore. Who's coming home to Granny Murray? Oh, yes, it's Lisa and Raymond. <laughs> Hello there. Raymond. Hiya, Granny Murray. <laughs> oh, and Lisa. Come on, wish the honey pies and see everyone. This looks like fun. Yes, we're playing a game of miniature ice hockey to get us in the skating mood. Oh, that's great, eh, Elise? <laughs> but now you hear Angel will do something new. <gasps> Why don't you dress Claude up as an ice skater? Oh, good idea. And while they're doing that, why don't we skate over there for a sit down? Good idea. Woo! <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> I'm not too good at skating, really. Oh, and neither am I, pet. But I'll get plenty of practice when I take Lisa to the ice skating rink later. She's really looking forward to it. Do you know, once I saw a pantomime on ice. Oh, really? Yes, it was Mother Goose. And when she laid the golden egg, it went skidding along the ice. Oh, no. Uh, yes, and then Mother Goose had to chase after it. And then she skidded and went, whoa, like straight up in the air. Well, the whole audience could see her bloomers. Oh. <laughs> Well, I played Mother Goose in a panto once, but it wasn't on ice, so nobody saw my bloomers. Oh. <laughs> but we did have a wonderful custard pie fight. <laughs> oh, I don't like those custard pie fights. That's a waste of good food. <laughs> They're great fun, though. Hey, talking of food, I remembered one of the new fantastic lunch boxes from the Biffy car for Lisa's lunch. Oh, that's fantastic. It's even got a train in the front. <laughs> but it's empty. Yes, the customers fill it up themselves. Oh, no. Oh, that means I should have filled it up. Oh, what a butter brain. There isn't any point in having a lunchbox if there's no lunch in sight. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, never mind. I'll make a packed lunch for her. She won't go hungry. Oh, thanks, Granny Murray. <laughs> oh, will you look at Claude? Oh. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. Claude, you will wow them on the ice. Oh, doesn't he look gorgeous? <laughs> well, I better zoom off too. I don't want to miss my train. Oh, no. This is for you, Daddy. <gasps> oh, thanks, Lise. Oh, little ice skates. <laughs> I'll look at those and think of you. Oh. <laughs> right, I better get to work. Come on, then. Chop, chop. <laughs> now, remember, there's no point having a lunchbox if there isn't any lunch inside. Thanks, Granny Murray. You guys have a fun day. <laughs> bye bye, my darling. We'll be thinking of you. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Will you keep a wee eye on Raymond? Make sure he goes the right way to work. I'm on my way to work today Walking my shoes through the city views Stepping along, I'm swinging my arms Singing my way through the city's charms Getting there is just so fine I so enjoy my walk Time. I always know the way I go But can you show me the way I go? Hey! OK, which way? Do I go left now or do I go right? Which way is wrong now? Which way is right? Left! OK, left to the station I'm on my way to work today Looking this way and that away. Hello, taxi. Hello, tank. Hello, trolley. Hello, plank. Hello, lorry. Hello, bank. He's on his way to work today. Looking this way and that away. Hey! Do I go up now or do I go down? Which way's a smile now? Which way's a frown? Up! Up! You told me the way I go Thank you! You showed me the way I know Thanks for that. Now what? Oh yeah! I need to get changed for work! Oh, 
all dressed and ready to go. Oh, and we're off. Bang on time, as always. <laughs> ah, hello, Raymond. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Kai. You're the guy. Hello. So, where are you two off to? Oh, I'm taking Kai to see my mum in Molly Moore. Ah, your grandma will be pleased to see you, Kai. Mm. <laughs> um, can we get a couple of juices, please, Raymond? Sure. Uh, apple or orange juice? Um, orange. Orange? There you are. It's one pound fifty. Anything else? What are those, Mummy? Oh, these, Kai. These are the latest thing I'm selling on the train. They're lunch boxes with a picture of a train on the front, and they're only two pounds fifty. Oh, look, Kai. No self-respecting child would be without one. Oh, Raymond, you're terrible. <laughs> um, I think we'll just have the juices, thank you. Can I have one, Mummy? I warned you. Please. <laughs> oh, all right then. Can we have one of the lunch boxes, please, Raymond? <laughs> there you go. That's uh, four pounds. Thanks, Raymond. OK, well, we'll be back on this train when we come back through Molly Moore. We'll see you later. OK. Bye, Kay. You're the guy. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh. I wonder what Lisa's got in her lunchbox today. I love to skip in Rivers e Bingo, Rivers e Bingo by the sea. I love to skip in Rivers e Bingo, Rivers e Bingo, that's for me. That's us. Now, what would you like in your lunchbox? Um, an apple and a yogurt, anybody, please? An apple and a yogurt, no problem at all. There's a nice cheese sandwich and apple and yogurt. There we are, and it all fits nicely into your dad's train lunchbox. <laughs> are you having fun, Daddy? Oh, <laughs> I hope you're having fun, Lise. Oh, where are we now? Molly Moore. I think this is where Kai's grandma lives. Ah, I'm right. Kai and Bobby are getting off. Bye, Raymond. Bye, Bobby. Bye. Have fun with your mum. Bye, Kai. Have fun with your grandma. Right. I think I'd better get on with some hard work. <laughs> I love my train. I'm so happy being me. Doing all the things I love to do. Chocolate, lemonade or tea. I'm just very happy serving you. Oh, I talk, talk, talk all day, making special moments on my way. I'll tell a joke and toast some cheese on toast. Oh, I walk, walk, walk all day, bringing smiles and happiness my way. Being nice is what I love the most. Six is just a looking fine. So happy being me, meeting all the people on the train. Can I help and clear your things? If there is a problem, I'll explain. Oh, I talk, talk, talk all day, wheeling trolleys, weaving to the sweet. I'll do a trick and make the journey quick. Oh, I walk, walk, walk each way, loving all the things I do each day. Bringing smiles and happiness my way. I love my train. Oh, Dr. Juno. Hiya, Raymond. What can I get you? Oh, I'd love a cup of tea, please. I have a pot ready. <laughs> oh, I've just been to a conference on healthy eating in schools. Oh, yes. Well, there you go, Dr. Juno. The cup that warms and cheers. Oh, thank you. All right, Raymond, own up. To what? Let's see what's in your packed lunch boxes. Oh, well, that's easy. Nothing. <laughs> oh, nothing? No, we don't put lunch in the lunch boxes. That's for the customer to do. We just sell the lunch box. What, well, could you do me a favour and put a healthy eating leaflet in each of the boxes? Oh, yeah, no probs. <laughs> oh, um, actually, Dr. Juno, could you do the rest? I, I need to go with my work. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Right, I'll just be one moment, sir. Oh, those are sweet. Oh, yes. Lisa gave me these. Well, how's Lisa getting on? Oh, she's fine, thanks. Right now, she'll be skating her little heart out in the River Sea Fingal Ice Rink. I love to skip in River Sea Fingal, River Sea Fingal, that's for me. Push off. Look, take anybody's hand. Take my hand. Push off. Oh, 
Yes. Well done. You're doing so well. Your daddy would be thrilled if he could see you now. Woohoo! What are you doing on the train, Daddy? Ah, uh, Lisa. This is the last one, Raymond. I thought oh. you might like it for Lisa's lunchbox. Thanks, Dr. Juno. I'll put it in there when I get home. Well, I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> right. I think I should start cleaning up now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no! Look at this! Someone's left their lunchbox behind. Oh dear. I've sold somebody on the train a lunchbox and they've gone away and left it. Whoever it is is going to be very upset. What shall I do? Oh, who did I sell this to? Oh, where did the time go? At eight o'clock, I took Lisa to Granny Murray's house. The children were playing a magnet game of ice hockey. Granny Murray said they were getting in the mood for going ice skating, so they dressed Claude as a gorgeous ice skater. I was pleased that I had remembered to bring Lisa's new Buffy car lunchbox for her day out. But I had forgotten to put any lunch in it. <laughs> Granny Murray said not to worry, she would pop some lunch in the lunchbox. The train left on time at 9 o'clock and my first customers were Bobby and Kai. They were on their way to Kai's grandma in Mollymoor. Bobby bought a special Buffy car lunchbox for Kai. At 10 o'clock the train arrived at Mollymoor and Kai and Bobby got off. At 12 o'clock, Dr Juno came in for a cuppa. She had been at a conference for healthy eating in schools. We put one of Dr Juno's healthy eating leaflets in each lunchbox. At one o'clock, I was having a tidy up when I found one of my special lunchboxes on the table where Bobby and Kai were sitting. It's a brand new lunchbox, so it must be the lunchbox Bobby bought for Kai. Now remember, there's no point having a lunchbox if there isn't any lunch inside. Empty? <laughs> well, Granny Murray's right. There is no point in having a lunchbox if there isn't any lunch in sight. And this is Kai's lunchbox. Well, he and Bobby will be back on the train at Mollymoor very shortly. <laughs> so I'll have to fill it for him. It's a race against time. I've got to do it. I've got to do it. I've got to beat the clock before the chime. I've got to sort it. I've got to sort it. I've got to do the job on time. Like a busy bee, I'm going to beat that bong I'm going to finish this job before I finish this song Do we think he's going to do it? Do the job that needs to be done Will he know how to fix it? Will he finish what he has begun? He's the surest way of friends, he will get there in the end Because he knows what he should do and work it through I've got to do it He's going to do it I've got to beat the clock before the chime I've got to sort it He's going to sort it I've got to do the job on time like a busy bee, I'm going to beat that bong. I'm going to finish this job before I finish this song. Oh, hello, Raymond. Oh, hi, Bobby. Hi, Kai. Did you have a nice time at your grandma's? Well, we did, until Kai realised that he'd lost his lunchbox. Oh, yes. Mmm. He was so upset that he wouldn't eat any of his lunch. And now he's starving. Oh, don't worry, Kai, because... I've got your lunchbox here. Oh, that's great, look. And if you look inside, there's some lunch. Wow, that's cool. Oh, thanks, Raymond. You're a star. Any time. I wonder what my wee skater is having for her lunch. I don't know about you, Lisa, but I'm starving after all that skating. <laughs> oh, cheeky. Hello, Raven. Hi, Granny Murray. Come on, we in. Come on, Lisa. Daddy's here. Hello, Daddy. Hello, my girl. <laughs> Have you had a good day with Granny Murray? Yes. Oh, we certainly did, didn't we, darling? What do you say to Granny Murray? Thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. And it's a big thank you to you from me too, Granny Murray. I remembered what you said. There's no point in having a lunchbox if there isn't any lunch inside. <laughs> it saved the day. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Come on, let's get you home. Bye-bye, my darling. I'm looking forward to 
looking forward to next time. Me too. Come on, Lisa. Let's chat about our time away. And I suppose you want me to tell you all about my time too. Well, there was laying ground and creeping, jumping, chasing, painting, laughing, digging, bathing, dressing, singing, swinging, walking, flight, hunting, hiding, jumping up and turning round, dressing up and sitting down. <laughs> but what was really special about today? Well, Claude was dressed as an ice skater because I was taking Lisa ice skating. Raymond had remembered to bring a lunchbox for Lisa. It was a special buffet car lunchbox, but he had forgotten to put any lunch inside. When Raymond was leaving, Lisa gave him a key ring with some ice skates on it to remind him of her. Before we went out, Lisa and I filled her lunchbox with a lovely healthy lunch. Later on, Lisa and I had great fun skating around and trying not to fall over at the ice rink. And then we sat down and had a lovely healthy lunch together. Lisa had her special buffy car lunchbox. When Raymond came to collect Lisa, he told me that he had remembered that I told him there's no point having a lunchbox if there isn't any lunch in sight. <laughs> and it saved the day. I hope you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> Me too. Bye bye, honey pie. My lunch is